Hi everybody, it's Kevin Raber, and thanks for uh, viewing this video, being part of PXL, and reading this article about a very unique and different new program which will give us a glimpse into the future, Luminar AI. Uh, this is a program by a company called Skylum. They've made Aurora HDR and Luminar uh, 2, 3, 4, <laughs> and they've given us a glimpse of some artificial intelligence in the previous versions. But what we're going to be seeing here is a program that looks at an image and determines what image it is, what kind of adjustments and corrections can be done, and then allows you to take it further and make the corrections to your liking, always using an AI kind of uh, approach to getting you started. It's really pretty cool. So let's take a quick understanding about what Luminar is. So it's quick, and it really is quick. It's easy. Um, once you get past a few curves, it's easy. And in that sense, it's um, kind of intuitive in the sense that you sort of have a left to right, up, down kind of thing. And it, uh, there's not very many menus and a lot of things to dig into. So you can get into this thing fairly quickly and easily. And then you can go into some of the power modes, which aren't really power modes, such as uh, masking and things later on. Um, I don't know how much of that I'll actually cover. So you'll get a fast and large catalog. I'll show that to you in one second. Um, a couple things it doesn't have, which surprises me, uh, but the program is only $99 in its first version, so maybe we'll see some of these uh, new features come into play fairly quickly. Uh, Luminar has been very good at doing many updates and fixing a lot of things as they go. So I assure you, based upon past experience, that uh, Skylum and Luminar uh, will be adding things almost every day. I know talking to some of their people that there's an extensive list of uh, things in regards to uh, new features and things that need to be done. But right now, we don't have any star ratings. We have no sorting, so there's no ability to really sort except uh, basic sorting capabilities, meaning you, you can't sort on stars, you can't sort on um, uh, metadata and things like that. Uh, there are no keywording. So if you go in there and put the word iceberg in or Antarctica or uh, grizzly bear or polar bear, uh, you can't uh, keyword and you can't call up and search based upon the keywords. And there's no, no metadata searching, meaning it would be nice if there is metadata searching uh, in the catalog where you could say, I want to see all the pictures shot with a Sony a7R IV uh, with the 24 to 70 G Master lens, and um, you don't get that. Or you don't get ISOs or anything else. So you have to use programs like Lightroom and Capture One that allow you to uh, individually set... Uh, parameters for what you want and uh, based upon the metadata and search your images. Now what happens is you can use those programs, find the results and export them in to Luminar. Uh, Luminar AI will handle the RAWs, DNG, TIFFs and JPEGs. Uh, it does so very effectively and if it doesn't they do show you in their help section how to convert a non-readable RAW file into a DNG using the Adobe DNG converter and then bring it into uh, Luminar AI. Um, missing also is selecting images from a folder. So on importing, if I want to import an image uh, or several images from a folder of captures, uh, I'd either have to do it one by one and or take the whole folder in. Um, I hope that uh, they'll fix that in the future. One of the nice things about importing a folder though is it will import subfolders. So if I have one uh, folder with four different folders for uh, different aspects of that particular session. It will bring all those images in and it does so pretty quickly. Uh, you can't do a virtual or a duplicate image. However, I'll show you how you can uh, make duplicates so that you have something that uh, shows you something before or something after or allows you to make a variety of um, images with effects on them. Um, there's no print option. If you want to print, you've got to export and then go into a program uh, such as Lightroom. Photoshop or Epson print layout. Uh, no scroll bars in the thumbnails in the catalog, which is I found kind of interesting. You have no idea where in the long stack you are as far as sorting goes because there's no scroll bars. And there's no capability of doing spotting. There's a clone tool and an erase tool, but 
uh, no easy spotting tool. So uh, those are some of the things that are done. Um, with templates, working with your images is actually super easy. Um, the AI features uh, take templates further. So a number of AI templates, a lot of them for that matter, are included uh, with your purchase. And most of those will determine whether it's a portrait, a cityscape, or any number of different things and uh, show you some templates that they think, or should I say the program thinks, uh, works best for what you're trying to do. And um, it's easy to make your own template. So like if you can take a template and get started making adjustments, changing things, uh, uh, varying the intensity and everything. Uh, so you, you can, in the end, save that as your own template. So uh, you can name those and bring up your own. Uh, Luminar's website also has a lot of templates for sale. This is going to be another money maker. And um, God, now that I think about it, maybe I should start making templates while it's still early in the game, and uh, they're selling for $19 uh, a set of templates uh, on the site. So you can certainly buy more templates. Um, I'm kind of the one, this whole template thing, uh, gives me some, um, some second thoughts. I've always been one never to use templates, uh, specifically in Lightroom and or uh, Capture One presets, as they might be known in those cases, as I kind of like to do my own raw editing and so forth. Now, I might save... Uh, settings so that I can apply them later on. So, for example, if I um, do an iceberg in uh, Antarctica with a mountain scene on a cloudy day, I make, might make adjustments and I can make those as a preset uh, or a style, as they call it in Capture One, and recall that when I have another set of icebergs. So th that's as far as I'll take it. I don't do a lot of the funky color stuff and things like that with my work, although some of you might disagree. Um, Anyway, there are some exclusive tools in uh, Luminar AI. Uh, there's a body tool, which is pretty cool, that takes your body and slims it or stretches it or fix the abdomen and all sorts of crazy things. The iris tool takes care of uh, adding accents to the eyes, even changing the color of the eyes. The face tool will allow you to thin the face and or put a light on the face. The skin tool softens all the defects in the skin and you can even hit a button that actually gets rid of defects. Accent uh, is uh, one that's an overall kind of thing. It just kind of uh, poofs up the picture a little bit. Boku is coming. I've seen it demonstrated, but it's not here yet. But it's very similar to the computational photography where uh, it knows where the subject is and then takes the background and gives you a variety of different uh, backgrounds. Atmosphere allows you to get rid of haze, put haze in, do all sort of things like fog and things. Structure takes care of what structure is, but it automatically does it. Sky is a sky replacement tool. Very cool, very quick, um, unbelievable uh, is how, how well it works. Uh, we have color harmony, super contrast, and mood. Uh, those are kind of new words as far as uh, processing goes. Augmented sky, where you can put birds or the moon or anything else that you want in the sky and make adjustments. And composition, and this is always one the fun to play with, where you push a button and uh, Luminar AI determines what the composition of your photograph should look like. Like it or not, it's pretty smart that way. Um, here's a, an image I did just to kind of show you how things change. When I put this image up, and we're going to go into detail on this in the demo I'm going to do here in a second, but you put an image up like this, <clears throat> and um, then you get a template, which is um, over here on the right. You can see uh, these are the different templates. Um, and you go through, pick the one you want, and when you're done, uh, specifically picking the template and making other adjustments. You can now like put a sunset back there with rays, change the clouds and do all sorts of crazy things. So uh, you have the ability to take one picture and go to another picture pretty easily. And this would have taken a lot more time in a program that we know traditionally is Photoshop. Um, Luminar sells uh, for a license with two computers for $99. And you'll get a Luminar X membership, which I highly recommend getting. I have one. Uh, for $59, so it's a, a savings over the 99 And it has 12 months of regularly created assets, so you'll get some new templates every month. Um, they have courses and videos um, and fresh sky textures and all sorts of cool things. So uh, you can get in there and take a look at that, and I see that growing and being a resource uh, also. It also shows you an area where you can double-check to see all the app, uh, per applications you own from uh, Skylum. So the, that's what we have. So let's go have some fun here and uh, get right into the, the Luminar program.
All right, let's get into uh, taking a quick look at how Luminar works. This is only going to be an overview. Um, we may be doing some tutorials on this eventually. Let us know in the feedback and in the comments section on the forum what you think of this, but uh, let's try to give a quick demo. First off, if you notice up here, Luminar right now, this catalog of mine has 17,778 images. And they're all sorted in folders down here. So I can go to any one of these folders and with a click, go to those folders and take a look at those images. And you can see how fast they scroll. So they work really well. And by double clicking on image, I can go in and uh, see it rather, rather large. There's no, no sliders on the side here so that you can't slide around and uh, see where you are in reference to where you're going. Um, I've got a lot of images in here, a whole bunch of different kinds of images. And what I've done, and I'm having a lot of fun, is I've selected a number of them. And uh, I have a folder down here called the demo folder, and that's what we'll be working in uh, this afternoon. So let's get started with this and start taking a look basically how things work. So I'm going to start with uh, a regular landscape photo, start with the landscape photos and kind of go from there. So I'm in the catalog. And by the way, to add a catalog, you get this button here and you can either add a folder or edit a single image. I Meaning you can bring a single image in or go anywhere on your hard drives and import a whole folder. And that will also import subfolders at the same time. Uh, as I said earlier, I would rather be able to open up a folder and select the images inside the folder, whether it be all of them or just a select few, so that my catalog gets to be a little manageable. I don't get a lot of duplicates and other things along the way. So that's something I hope they kind of fix as we go on. Um, so I'm going to start with this image here. So I'll just double click on the image and you can see we get a kind of a, a, a nice shot already. If I go to templates, which is your next step, it's going to recognize that it's a scene. See where it says scenery collection. It will give me a number of uh, choices in the templates that I can look at and try to determine where I like it. You can see that one automatically changes the cloud. I don't really like that one. This is a simple one. Uh, and this is kind of clear skies. So you kind of bounce back and forth until you find where you're looking and what you want to work with. I am going to go with pleasing touch. And anywhere along the line, you have a before and after. So you can look at a before and after, or you can look at the whole image before, after. So now you can see what we're working it. So the next step would be uh, to hit the edit button. And the edit button opens up a whole slew of other tools. So let's take a look at those. Click the edit button at the top. And I go all the way up here and I have essential. So the first essential is composition AI. And you always know that it's an AI kind of thing because it has AI after the name. So this was a particular tool that has artificial intelligence put into it. So I'm going to hit composition and it puts a crop mark around the whole folder. And then if you hit the composition button, it makes a suggestion. How do it makes its choice? I'll never know. But it kind of says, this is what I think you should use. And it's actually not a bad choice if you get down to it. So you can move that image up, down, and around until you kind of find out where you want it. And for the sake of uh, working with this program, I'm going to say I like that composition. And um, I can hit the button. Now, I can, I can choose and change composition any way I want, and whether it's free form or keeping it in perspective using the tools over here. So I have it on the original um, perspective. and. Um, original format, and I can go to free formatting and make a, a few extra choices and kind of change it around, fit it in. And when it's like the way you want it, you can just hit the title bar. That goes away, crops it. Next thing we do is we go into erase mode. Now, we're not going to use erase mode in this image because there's nothing to erase. But we are going to look at the light mode. Now, light mode opens up. It's a very familiar kind of uh, uh, panel, and I might want to warm this image up, play with the exposure a little bit up or down. Now I want to take a look at the histogram. Obviously I have a histogram in the curves, but they have a very poor histogram. This is something uh, they should fix. And you can see up here, the, the histogram shows up and it's just a terrible histogram. Uh, they've got to do better on their histogram tool. So uh, going to add a little smart contrast 
recover highlight areas. I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. And uh, I think I've got what I want for there. Now I can go into Enhance. I can want to add a little Accent AI. kind of just gives it a little punch. Remember, we started one place. This is where we started. This is what we've got so far. So all this is done with very few kind of choices. Now I'm going to actually add a little structure and give it a boost. Color. We have an ability here to take a look at color, change saturation, up or down. Or we can even go into hue, saturation, and luminance levels, pick a color, and make a change. So I'm just going to go into the saturation side of things. And I'm going to take that orange color and just take it down a little bit or take it up. You can kind of play around with it. And let's take a look at blue if I want to make the sky a little more blue or bring that back down. So I'm going to add a little blue in it. Once again, we can come back up here and take a look at before and after. So it's getting to have a little bit more fun. We go into the detail slider. I'm going to add just a little bit of detail in the large and the medium size of things. And I'm going to throw just a tad of sharpening in. And you can see once again, that image has changed. Uh, there's a denoise factor in here that I can work with. Um, I'm going to just add a little denoise. You can't really see it in a color denoise. Now I go in the landscape and now I can add certain things like dehaze. So if you look in here, we have a bunch of haze. Uh, we're going to try to get rid of some of that haze. So we'll kind of use a dehaze tool. And you can see that haze is kind of going away and opening it back up. It's also golden hour, so maybe I want to add a little golden hour. Wow, and that really got to be kind of crazy. So I may want to go back up here and here to color and take the saturation down after I made those corrections until I get it to where I want it. Once again, before and after so far, before, after, before, after. You can see it's quite a change so far. So that takes us through some of the uh, the essentials. Now, we have creative where we can actually change skies, add an augmented sky, change the atmosphere. For example, if I wanted to add fog or haze, I could do that. We're not going to do that with this picture. I do have sun rays, just kind of cool. I'll put it in here. So I'm going to place the spot, the center spot where the sun rays would be is right there. And now, oops. I didn't go where I wanted it to go. So I can put that down here. And now you can actually have uh, sun rays and you can make all sorts of adjustments to the sun rays if you want. And I'm just going to do that for the sake of um, kind of showing you how it's done. Uh, so that's kind of where we are with that. I have sun settings. I can do the radius. I can do a glow. Ray settings. I can, how many rays do I want? And um, let's throw those light rays in there like that and randomize them a little bit if I want. So there's all sorts of cool things we can do. We can do some drama. <clears throat> so now I add some really cool drama. I can add mood. Now this is a really very cool program part of, of things. Also depending on what kind of images you work with. On mood, this is lookup tables. And I can open up these lookup tables and as I slide down those, you can see each one of those adds a different effect to the edited image. So maybe I want to go something drama like that. So let's just do that. So we have that done once again, before, after, before, after. Uh, I can do toning, which I'm not going to do in this shot. Add magic or, or matte. I can do a mystical, uh, which is kind of weird. It kind of glows and does some funny things there. I can colorize certain things. I can go to glow and if I want, I might want to add the Orton effect. So now I've added the Orton effect. And then I can actually add the amount of the Orton effect. So once again, we'll go to before, after, before, after. So we got some pretty cool stuff going on here. Um, this is the portrait mode. We'll come back to that in a minute. Then we have pro mode. Here we can adjust some, ob ob some optics. So we can uh, kind of fix uh, distortion and so forth if you so wanted to do that. Uh, we can do vignette if we like and so forth. We can add super contrast, which I'm not going to because it doesn't need it. Color harmony. Uh, we can say some brilliance in there, which is way too much. Kind of want to back that off to there. Um, color contrast if I want to use it. So there's a lot of different tools 
that I can work here. Dodging and burning, which will allow me to go in here with a brush and dodge and burn certain areas. Um, if I wanted to lighten up this mountain over here, for example, let's just try that. I'm going to go to lighten, going to go to brush size. Uh, use the regular bracket tool to adjust the brush size. And I'm going to take the strength down. So let's take a look at what happens. You can see I'm brushing in some detail on this area so that it's not completely defunct. And the more you brush over it, the more it appears. So I can do the same thing over here and so forth along here. So now I've added slight detail to uh, the image. Kind of, kind of cool. And then there's clone and stamp. I don't want to do any cloning and stamping, so we're not going to bother with this tool at all. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I've gotten. I can take a look at a slide before and after. Wasn't a bad shot. Now it's a heck of a lot different, isn't it? It wasn't bad, more different. So, you know, this is a new way of, of taking your photos and, and getting them a lot further than you've done before. Now I'm going to do is just going to export this. The exporting is not as strong. Remember, there's no print module in here. So I'm going to save the disk. I'm going to go here and hit save the disk. A dialog box pops up. I usually put here a suffix, and it'll be L-U-M-A-I for Luminar AI, which will allow me to know that I did something there. I'm going to just leave it on the desktop. I'm not going to do any sharpening. I can resize. I just want it to original size, or I can change the dimensions on all the edges. Uh, JPEG, and uh, actually, let's make this a TIFF because I want to keep it high. And I can do a 16-bit or 8-bit TIFF at 300 uh, pixels per inch. And I can just save that right to the desktop at this point. So what we've done is we've made and made adjustments to a landscape picture, and uh, it's well and good. Let's go back to the catalog. Now this is a part that sort of bothers me on the catalog, is I've got this great picture, but now I've lost the original image that I worked with. So I'm going to right click on it, <clears throat> say show in Finder. It will go find the image from the catalog in the Finder, highlight it for me up here, and then I come down here and I say duplicate. And it makes a duplicate. I can close this Finder, and it will now put this into the system uh, next time I open up the catalog. I think I, if I just go over here to, to um, uh, like a different catalog looking here, and then we go back to demos, it should place, uh, and it usually does place an additional image there. Uh, so that's kind of an easy way to do things. And that way you can put your before and afters up there. Uh, I'm going to do one more sort of a, a landscapey picture. Um, and we'll go there. I'm going to do this one just because it's a sky and has a sky in it. And we want to kind of look at the sky replacement tools. Hit template. It decides it's a scene. Pick what I want. <laughs> that one was pretty good right off the bat. Pleasing touch. That's kind of a, a little more muted. Fast fix, too much for me. Simple, clear skies. I'm going to go up here to clear and sharp, and uh, then we're going to go right into the edit mode. I'm going to go right up to essentials. I'm going to start with composition. I don't really want to change the composition, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go to light. I'm going to warm this image up just a bit more and take the exposure back, add some smart contrast, recover the highlights, open up a little shadows and just kind of set the mood for where I want to be. Um, enhance. If I wanted to, I could do AI Enhance, and it'll go even further. So let's just kind of leave it where that is. You can do a Sky Enhancer, uh, which is kind of nice. Structure. We don't need to do any structure. Color. I'm not going to really change any color. There's nothing I'd want to change here. So you can skip through these if you want along the way. I might want to throw some dehaze in there just to kind of bring it up. There's no golden hour and just kind of uh, do the foliage enhancer, so I got that nice brilliant green. Uh, now let's go into creative, and let's go into sky. And this is the fun part. This is the sky replacement tool. I'm going to pick the skies. I have all these skies. Let's just put bright sky blue in. That's nice, but not quite what I'm looking for. And, you know, you can kind of go through and look for your skies. Now that's pretty nice. And, you know, notice that when it changes, it also... Uh, it changes the lighting of the, the shot at the same time. So I kind of like where that is. Um, I can come down here to Pro and decide if there's anything else I'd want to do. Uh, dodging and burning, there really isn't. So 
Uh, I'm going to leave it where it is and save it so we can move on to the next one. So just let's do a quick export. Save the disk. Um, and we're saving it. And like I said, I always put L-U-M-A-I on it. And save that. Very cool. So now I've got a completely different picture, and we'll do a before and after of it here so you can see it in one second. All right, let's take a look at before, after, before, after, before, after. And of course, we can do slide over, which is also kind of fun. So you're going to find that you're going to have an awful lot of fun with your images uh, going back and forth and doing these. So you can see how easy it is. So as far as that goes, it does a pretty fun job and I'm having a blast with this program. All right, let's go back to the catalog and let's pick a, a, a people picture. I'm going to uh, pick this one picture. And uh, just because it's not a, it, this picture's by Michael Durr, our videographer, by the way, and uh, it's a really nice shot, but let's have a little fun with this picture and see where we can go with it. I uh, go to hit template and I can start looking and it's it's coming up with a scenery because it doesn't recognize it. So I'm going to go down to portraits and go to essence and now I'm going to select the look I want. So I think I'm going to go back up to marquee or fashionable. I'm going to go to fashionable. So I'm going to select fashionable. And now I'm going to go into my edit mode. First thing I want to do is some basics. So I'm just going to go in here to composition and see what it says for composition. And you can see that uh, this put a big composition on it. I don't like the composition, mind you. So I'm going to come up here and say, give me a free design. And I'm just going to make my quick crop on this so that I like the proportioning better. Try to position her in a strategic spot, and then we're done with her composition. So it crops the image for us. I'm going to go in here to light. I'm just going to warm this image up a bit. Uh, not that much. Like that. Open up the shadows of hair. You'll see more. I can do a lot more on this later. I'm going to take that back. And I'm going to hit a couple little quick things on enhance. You can see the enhanced slider doing its trick. And I'm automatically, at this point, going to go into the portrait mode. And this is where we really begin to have some fun. So the first thing I want to do is, this is the face, OK? So what I want to do is hit face light. Watch what happens on the face light. It automatically detects where her face is and allows me to light that face. OK, so let's go into before and after so you can see that. Boom. So you can see that it's doing the face, puts a light on the face. I can slim the face. Now, this is where it comes to be a little trouble in the sense that you got to make some judgmental choices. Well, obviously, people like slim faces. So let me slim her face down a bit. Once again, you can look at before, after. I can zoom in a little bit if you want. Now, it takes a look at the eyes next. Um, iris visibility. It has that pretty high on the list right now. Also, let's change the color of her eyes. Shall we make them blue? Wow, see the difference there, how, how zoom it is? Or maybe she's a better, a, a green-eyed person kind of going with um, a little more subtlety there. I can also take the eyes and open them up a little bit. So I can open her eyes so they're different than what they were. I can whiten the eyes and the white of the eyes, as you can see, it gets whiter. And I can add eye enhancer. Uh, let's see if that shows. It does, but it doesn't show that well through that, so you'll just have to trust me. There's no dark circles to remove, and there's no uh, eyebrows. I can do the eyebrows a little bit. You can see, watch your eyebrows. It goes dark, the light, so you can bring up the eyebrows. I can take a look at the mouth. I can say lip saturation should be more, lip redness should be more, lip darkening. And a teeth whitening. I'll just zoom up her roll on teeth whitening at this point. Now we can do skin. And I can smooth out her skin and take away any shine on her skin. 
as I want. If she had a body, I could go and change the whole shape of her body. Uh, we'll do that at another uh, quick image. And um, then we're all set. Let's take a look at it before. So this is what we looked like before when we started. This is where we are now. Before, now, maybe I'd put a vignette in there and do a few other things, but I think you get the general gist of the idea, um, particularly what it's done is for the eyes and the shape of the face and so forth. Pretty cool. All right, once again, let's export that. Save the disk, save the disk. Put Loom AI on the back of it, L-U-M AI, and away it goes. So we're all finished on this one. Let's go back to the catalog. And let's do one more with a, a body. Gosh, there's so many, so many fun ones we can play with here and and, and do things with. But um, uh, let's take this shot. I'm going to um, show in Finder and make a duplicate first. Duplicate. Okay. So now I have a duplicate in the system. I'm going to double click her and I'm going to go back to catalog for a second. Excuse me. Adjustments. I want to revert to original. There we go. So now this is how the image starts. And uh, let's go ahead and pick a template real quick. I'm going to do this fast so you can see and I'm going to talk fast. Pick what I want, the kind of look I like. Boom. I'm going to go with that look. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to go back to Essentials. Always go back to the Essentials. I'm going to look at Composition and Cropping. Let's see what this suggests for Composition. It doesn't really make a big difference. So what I'm going to do is kind of slide things along the way I want um, and do Freestyle. Okay, like that. And come down on the head a little bit. So there's my crop, get out of that. Go into lighting, want to warm that temperature up a little bit for this picture, kind of like that. Take the exposure down just a hair, put a little drama in it myself. Remember, I'm trying to do all these things. I open up the shadows a hair. Um, I like where I am there. So let's go right into the portrait mode. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to adjust her body because I haven't shown this to you. So it takes the body shape and either narrows it down um, or if you can see it kind of broadens her in this case or really narrows her down. So um, be careful with this one. I'm going to go right about there. I think that looks nice. And then it does the abdomen too. Um, you can see that it kind of stretches that abdomen. I'm going to put that one there. That kind of matches up nice there. Let's go to her face and start working with her face. I want to put the light on the face. So I'm going to throw the light on the face first off so you can see how that's done. I'm going to slim her face just a bit, like that. She's got iris visibility. I'm going to go up on that. I'm going to do iris flare, and I'm going to enlarge her eyes a hair. Let's see if we can see a before and after there. Before. So there's before, and there's after of what we're doing. Now, sometimes using other programs, this is going to take a long time. I'm going to whiten her eyes a little bit, enhance her eyes a little bit, no red eye removal. She has no dark circles. Improve the eyebrows a hair. Let's go to lip saturation. So I'm going to really give her a little bit of lips, a lip redness now. Throw those in there like that. Lip darkening and teeth whitening. And we've got that. Let's take a look at her skin. If she has any skin uh, defects, this will automatically remove them. So I hit that button. There really aren't. I'm going to remove some of the shine and give her a little bit more of a, a China kind of girl look. And then we can do high key if we wanted to do anything there. Uh, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to come back up here to uh, creative, or excuse me, pro. Dodging and burning. This is where I could come in and do dodging and burning if I wanted to. Let's just do that for a second. I'm going to darken, set the brush size up like that. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm 
Well, that's way too much, so we're going to reset that. Um, I'm just going to come in here one time and darken that. So I'm just kind of showing you that that's there that you can work with if you want. Maybe I want to come in here in the corners. Kind of work that way. Or I can also go back to Essentials, Vignetting, select my subject, and then kind of put a more of a, a look on it. So I've now done this portrait. What did it take just a few minutes to do? Uh, let's take a look at before and after. I'll have to close the box. You have to do close the box before you can look at that. So here's the slider. That's what we started with. That's what we came out with. Pretty remarkable if you really think about it. And um, quite amazing that you can do this kind of stuff with an image so quickly. Um, let's go back to the catalog. Uh, I've now taken up enough of your time. I have a lot of images that I've been working with and playing with and uh, working with so that I can do these things. And I'm just amazed at what is coming out when I do this. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting that this $99 program will allow me to make all these changes uh, the way I've been making them. You will have to make some choices and decisions yourself. Is this a program for you for $99 uh, with what it does? I would certainly consider adding it to my arsenal. Um, there's a lot of things still missing on it, so you're gonna have to probably bounce back and forth between Capture One and Lightroom, and there are plugins in uh, Lightroom to go into this program, as well as a plugin from the Photos app on uh, your, your computer, so you can take the images from your mobile devices and uh, select that as an editing program uh, while you're on the computer, not the mobile device itself, and uh, edit images from there. Uh, I haven't seen how far the catalog, the, the catalog can go yet as far as images, but I have 17,000 uh, images and it's performing quite nicely, uh, better than I expected. You can take any images in the catalogs you want, grab them and drag them into folders. As you can see, uh, I made the folder demo down here and that's what we've been working with. So that works. There is a history button, so when we have the image open, you can see here's all the history of all the corrections that were made and the amounts of which were made. And I can go back in there and select any one of them and make changes to them. Pretty cool. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, staying with me through this demo. I hope you like it. It's a lot of fun. I also want to make sure that you all stay safe during the holiday. Uh, don't travel if you don't have to. Uh, enjoy your family uh, virtually. And uh, this pandemic thing is almost over. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train coming at us. And all I want to do is get this vaccine get kind of back to a normal life and start traveling again. In the meantime, thank you very much for being part of the Photo PXL family where we're enhancing your vision every day. We got a lot of work to do, a lot of cool things coming and uh, certainly appreciate you being part of our family. Take care, have a good holiday and uh, we'll see you soon.